Hi, I'm Sue from Coulter's Paradise. I'm here today to talk to you about the double wedding ring. We've come up with a solution using our slit and sew templates that will make it easy for everyone to be able to do. What I'm showing you here is a table runner. Okay. One of the key things that we did was we simplified it into doing it in a block basis and this is a block, this square. So no craziness when you want to put it together. I'll be showing you how to do this in a minute. So I'm now going to show you how we create this block, but I want to tell you the fabric that we're using is a Fruitful Life by Maywood Studios. You should be able to get this at your local quilt stores. So we start out with, we have an A and we're going to put it right here. Now one of the things is we're going to cut the A's out of a two and a half inch strip. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then when it's all put together, you have to put six A's together and then you're going to cut it with a B because that will now give us our slits to be able to line up. Okay, so we've got our A and our B template handled. Now we have a C and a D. C is the outside of the block, okay, which I call the L-shaped, and the D is the inside of the ring. We also have the external parts of the ring, which is template E. E can also be cut out of a two and a half inch strip. So what we have here is our C's, our D, these are our E's, this is our A here, but then it's cut into a B. And how we construct the A's, and I'm going to bring you over to here, you're going to use a two and a half inch jelly roll and you're going to just cut these out. Cut here, then you can flip it, cut here. Okay, and down the side. Then I'm going to show you how to do the E's which I chose for this one. I kept it the same that all the E's were these two colors. So I put it on here. It's a little bit bigger than we need. Cut it out, flip it over, cut again, and keep going. So I've sewn six A's together and I get this curve. Now I can take the B template and what I need to do is I put it on here so that none of the slits fall on the seam. I forgot to tell you one thing is the pressing. And I tell you about this there. I say press to the inside because basically both these edges have to be pressed in. If you press those out, the odds are you're going to have too many layers on your, your slit. So then I try to, you know, I, I just wiggle it around and make it fit and then you're going to cut this out and this is what you're going to get at the end. Okay, each block is going to measure eight inches and it turns out eight inches finished. It turns out you need four to get a full ring set. Okay, now traditional double wedding ring is curved on the side. If you want to do a traditional wedding ring, you leave off a C. Okay. And so now we're going to switch down to here. This shows a non-traditional double wedding ring. This is what I prefer because I don't like bias binding, so I don't want to have the in and out. So I have full blocks here. On this side, I have to put together like this would be without a C, this would be without a C, that would be without a C, this would have both C's. So you have to know what type of finish you want. On page six of your pattern, we're going to start by sewing a B to a C, okay? And I'm going to now take this over to the sewing machine. Here is my C. Here is the B that goes like this. But how I have to start sewing it is here. 
So now I'm going to attach piece C and piece B together. B is composed of six A's. So C is going to be face up. I like to have the L this way. Then I put this right along here and I match this up. So I'm going to put this under. I have um, created a quarter inch seam. On this machine, if I used a quarter inch foot, it doesn't use all the feed dogs. I like the machine to work for me, so I'm using an open toe foot and I moved my needle over and marked for a quarter inch seam. Okay, I do th about three to four stitches and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this slit up with this slit up. Now some people want a pin. <clears throat> I prefer no pins. That's why I designed it this way. But if you want a pin, you can just mark it and pin. Now I'm going to line this one up and this one here. Believe it or not, it is there. You can't see it. But I can. Again, here, here's a slit, here's a slit. Bring it over. Keep lining it up. I want my seam to be flat. Here's this one. I'm going to line that up, tug again, go almost to the end and I'm going to stop and try to make sure that this is lined up. Bring this over, put it down and sew. So these are now sewn and what I want to do is I want to press towards the C which is not the B. So. I press the seam out. Okay. I'm going to flip it so you can see and just make sure it's nice and flat. What I'm going to do now is I have this and I'm going to make another one of these. I'll do it offline and then I'm going to be adding this. So I'm going to show you now how to add the center one, okay? But I need two of these in the block, so I'll make another one offline, but I'll show you how to add this one. Again, how I like to start is this CB combo is going to be face up, this D is face down, and I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to line that up with that edge right there. And now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. I like to start with a header just in case, give myself... Sometimes thread likes to go into the machine. If you have a header, it's not going to do that for you. So now I'm going to move over to the machine. Again, this is lined up. Here, I'm going to do my three stitches and now I have a slit right here and a slit here. I'm going to pull them together, keep my edge along this blue tape and sew to there. And this is just very forgiving. It's a very forgiving seam. It's not very sharp. It's nice. You just want and fabric is flexible. It will go with you. Okay, now you see this? This is not together yet, so we're going to bring this over. And now this is lined up here and at the edge and we're just going to sew right off. Okay, I want you to keep watching now. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to come back to the ironing board, which is right here. And again, okay, 
I want to press away from the B, so now I'm going to be pressing to the D. So now I'm going to do that. And there we go. And look at how nice that is. It's a nice curve. We're going to be joining this over here. Okay, for a non-traditional um, double wedding ring for the outside edge, then we're going to have this and this. Now we have to add the E pieces to both of these ends and then we're going to sew the whole thing together. I've already sewn for a traditional double wedding ring this together and see it looks like it's not going to fit but it fits right in here <laughs> okay so I'm going to show you how to do the sides here so I'm going to bring this over and again I like my BC combo face up I like my E this is going to go here and this will be face down and I just line this up because when I'm done I want to square so I make sure that I'm perfectly lined up there I'm going to put this over my header is getting too thready but that's okay get it out of the way put this in And I have slits here to match and I sew to the slit. Okay. I'm going to take that off. I'm not going to press it right now because I want to sew the other end on. So I put my header back in and I'm going to bring this over. Okay. This is going to go here. I like this face up, that face down. Bring this over. And what I like is since, well, for lining up, I like it perfect like that. So I'm going to flip it around and sew this way because I want that edge perfect. I'm going to start sewing. You see these are off. Now I start moving them together. got both sewn together and now like this and what I'm going to do is these were pressed out so this is going to be pressed in and it tells you that in your directions Okay, now we're going to add this together. All right, again, I start with my header. So I'm going to put this on. And this time, I'm going to put this face up. This is going to be face down. We're going to line this up right here and we're going to sew three stitches keeping that square one two and maybe four because you can go right by where the seam is then you're going to join these together i line up my slits i bring it over to the blue and i sew to here again we're going to line there's a slit down here that you can hardly see but i can see it and a slit here tug, pull to the slit, sew to the slit. And I'm just going to keep sewing around to the slit. up, 
pull these together. Okay, I want you to see that this is off right here. When we get about here, we're going to make it so that it's square. So we're going to sew to about here, about to where the seam is. Raise this. You're going to push this out of the way and bring this over so that this edge is now lined up. This is how you get your block. And we sew off. Okay. And I want you to see we have a square block. And I'm going to press it flat. There we go. Now you make three more of these, put them all together, and that gives you one ring. So this is the block we just finished. And um, as you can see, you're going to put four of them together, and that ends up making your ring. If I had another over here, then I would get two more rings. Okay, so that's what you can do. One of the things that we give you is the ability for you to design yourself and instead of having a bunch of A's, just use B's. Don't make the A's, just use them in a full color. The other thing you can do is these can all be unique colors. So I'd love to see what you do. Thank you for joining us for the double wedding ring. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. This is Sue from Quilters Paradise where we make quilting simpler.